Since its opening 21 years ago, this station has always encouraged the development of variety in musical performances within the viewing area by the production of talent quests, concerts, recitals and drama. The first of these shows was in February 1963 when Stan Murray compared the live Saturday evening show Search for Talent. More than 200 acts from the channel's viewing area were auditioned, including dancers, instrumentalists, jazz and dance band groups, and even a trained dog. Some 50 to 60 qualified to appear on the program, showing that the viewing area had a large number of potential entertainers. In July 1969, CBN-CWN conducted a series of auditions and produced a local episode of New Faces. The talent in the area proved strong enough for compare Terry Deer to return in the same year to produce another episode for Australian distribution throughout the National Nine Network. 430,000 Hong Kong dollars was available to the viewing area contestant as first prize in 1978 when an episode of the Asian Amateur Singing Contest was recorded at the studios. From over 50 applications, 12 finalists were chosen for the CBN CWN heat, and local singers Patricia Watts and Barry Patterson went on to Sydney to appear in the Australian final. From 1979 onwards, Midstate Television auditioned and then produced some 20 acts for the series National StarQuest. Of all these artists, Sue McLaren-Smith, a 17-year-old dancer from Cowra, was the most successful, reaching the grand final in Series 1. Even though it was not a talent quest, the 1969 production in the centre of it all provided an outlet where local viewing area artists could gain television experience. This monthly pop show was compared by now well-known Capital 7 Canberra personality Frank Jones and assisted by Sue Smith. Up and down. In December 1965, four years after it opened, CBN8 staged its most ambitious live production, a 70-minute musical Christmas pantomime called In the Land of Old King Cole. The panto was completely homegrown, as it was written by CBN newsreader Stan Murray. Major roles were filled by members of the Orange Dramatic Society, with award-winning actress Audrey Gilchrist playing the role of the good fairy Amicus, and Brian Mackey played Elias Crump. CBN's artist Clive Kaufman built the sets for the five scenes in the main studio. Staff members' involvement also included minor parts in the cast of 20, while station personality Michael McRae was host and Stephen Flay was musical director. A completely different area of variety entertainment that Midstate Television has produced were its two major telethons. In August 1973, we conducted a 10-hour telethon to raise funds for sheltered workshops throughout the region. Guests at the Orin Studios included Ina Harwood, Earl Bailey, Barbie Rogers and four members of the cast of Number 96, as well as a long list of other well-known national and local personalities. Sydney radio and television personality Bob Rogers soared to great heights during the night after accepting a challenge to jump over a chair from a standing start. During the night, donations were accepted at the studios by nurses from Orange and some $50,000 was raised for distribution to the various sheltered workshops. 
The 1980 telethon was produced as part of a New South Wales network of stations who were all raising money for the Royal Alexandra Children's Hospital. During the weekend, over $120,000 was raised from our viewing area, which was the highest percentage per head of population in New South Wales. On October the 9th, 1976, we produced a feature from the opening concert at the Orange Civic Centre. The Orange City Council had invited CBN, CWN to sponsor the opening night's entertainment and the variety concert was completely underwritten by Country Television as a gesture to the community of Orange on the occasion of the opening of one of the finest regional entertainment centres in Australia. The CBN Night of Stars, as it was known, was compared by Jimmy Hannon and star performers included Larray Desmond, Isidore Goodman and Chris Kirby. However, it was with pleasure that the station also included two local acts. Mrs. Bobby Clayton, an Irish harpist who had appeared several times at the Opera House, and the very well-known Roland Gregory Orpheus Male Voice Choir, who in the same month were celebrating their 50th anniversary. One of the most well-known entertainers to regularly produce shows at our studios has been Mike McClellan. I'm just a song and dance man, living on a smile, I'll share your The most notable achievement in our industry is to win one of these, the Logie. And that we did in 1979 with our half-hour documentary, Going Down the Road, when we looked at one day in the life of a circuit rodeo cowboy. Preceding that, in 1977, we almost made that when the Television Society of Australia presented us with a certificate of commendation for our production of Mike McClellan's program, Song and Dance Man. This station, because they could offer the best in production facilities, also gained recognition as the originating station of the series Ask the Leyland Brothers and The Great Outdoors. Over 100 episodes of these series were produced at the studios and have been screened throughout Australia and overseas. As part of the coverage of the 1978 Australian National Horse Festival in Dubbo, CBN CWN produced a half-hour documentary entitled Going Down the Road, which looked at the day in the rodeo life of cowboy Ron Rayner. This program was awarded the 1978 TV Week Logie for the most outstanding contribution by a regional television station. Rayner won the award for the best all-round cowboy at the rodeo following his last ride of the night. Right out here he is, Ronnie Rayner, on the good old horse. Cyclone. Look at that for riding, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that for riding. Give him a big hand. That old horse got right down and got up again. Pick up, man.
we're going to have to have him back. I have to tell those ambulance men they can't possibly take him away because we're going to need him here. Right, Rainer, we've got to have him back in the ring. Whether we carry him out in the stretcher or not, we're going to have to have him back. I have to tell those ambulance men they can't possibly take him away because we're going to need him here. Right, Rainer, we've got to have him back in the ring. Whether we carry him out in the stretcher or not, we're going to have to have him back. years of television and we've looked particularly at local production but what does the future hold well one person who can answer that question is mr ian ridley who is general manager of country television services mr ridley with regard to local production what does the future hold roger we've we've been very proud of what we've achieved over the last 21 years in local production we feel that the crew of experts that we've built up over this time is improving and we feel that the need for local production is vital in a regional television station as is as it is in a uh, regional radio station without localism you do not have the opportunity of of local people airing their views on on matters and this would be i think catastrophic in a in a regional area as far as the production work that we're doing, we want to continue to expand what we're doing. We want to do more as we can afford to do more and as we can afford the, to maintain the sort of quality that we try to achieve. We don't want to do additional production just for the sake of doing additional production. We want to do, turn out a good product at all times. Now, everyone's talking, of course, about the satellite situation. How is that going to affect the Mid-State Television Company and uh, the general technical aspects of it? I think if I could answer that a little bit more broadly and, and quickly recap the various new technologies that we're facing might be the best way of trying to, exp to answer that question. Firstly, I think we are looking at a satellite. We are looking at a uh, launch in mid-85 for the first satellite and then a second satellite towards the end of 1985. At this point of time, the government has only committed itself to one television service being transmitted from that satellite. That'll be the ABC, and it's designed to feed a program service to the remote areas of Australia. There is plan for a second service, which has not been finalised yet, and it may be a commercial service perhaps provided by a consortium made up of the metropolitan television stations and the regional television stations. Personally, I believe that's the way it's likely to go. We have uh, this company in conjunction with the other regional stations have put in a proposal to the government that we provide this sort of service. This is a service again to, to provide a commercial signal to remote homesteads that currently don't get any commercial signal. So we're looking at a satellite, we're looking at the possibility of cable being introduced. I, at this point, however, I think the government will uh, delay introduction of cable. We're also looking at subscription television, which would be an over-air television service that the viewer would pay a monthly fee for if they want to receive the signal and we're also looking at supplementary television licenses now the supplementary license is one that we again have certainly indicated to the government that we're most interested in providing and uh, we assume that this new government will continue along that path so we're looking at many new technologies none of which have been really finalised, apart from the fact that the satellite will fly. And uh, so we think that uh, uh, the next 10 to 15 years are going to be a most exciting and most challenging period, and our company 
will attempt to become involved in any form of new technology where we believe that it can improve the services to the local communities in our area. Well, the future does sound exciting. Well, we've had 21 years of local production in television and we've thoroughly enjoyed bringing this program to you and we hope that you've enjoyed it too. And of course, a program like this can't be made without you, the viewers, over the past 21 years and also, very importantly, our advertisers. And to you and to our advertisers, we say thank you very much indeed and we look forward to the next 21 years. Thank you.